Hello guys! A few weeks ago I released a video about changes in release schedule of Laravel and part of that release was a website laravelversions.com created by the team of Titan and Matt Stauffer and I didn't mention then that they released this website publicly on GitHub. So if you scroll down there is a link source on GitHub. So in this video let's take a look at how source of that website works. Let's learn from the best and I consider Titan one of the best companies in Laravel world. And let's see how they structure the code, what interesting solution they have inside of that repository. And you can consider that a code review, but more like code learning session, how can we improve our own code. So I have installed the project locally, and let's see what it does. First, as any code review, I start with routes. And here we immediately find something interesting, route localized. It comes from a package, code zero Laravel localized routes. If we go to the GitHub of that package, here's how it looks. It does a lot of the features around routing, but the main thing is, if you install that package, you can configure in your localized routes file, which is this one, what locales do you support. In this case, it's English and Polish, and look what it does. On the website, in the top right corner, you can choose a language. If you choose Polish language, the URL becomes slash PL, and it's translated. If you go to, for example, uh, home page, it's still Polish, you change that to English, and you go to the version page, which is version 10, you change that to Polish, URL becomes slash PL slash 10. How does that work? All the translations for all the pages, if you go to Laravel versions controller index, and we go to versions index.blade, and we go to color key, for example, all the text on the page are using double underscore function for translations. And all the translations are done in resources, lang, and then there's pl.json and en.json. Next, let's take a look at the controller. And in the index list, you have all the versions coming from the database, database model Laravel version. And there are two things I would like to point out here. First, there are active versions and inactive versions passed to the view, but there are no two queries to the database. There is one query to get all the Laravel version, and then those sub variables are coming from the initial collection. So in your case, if you have a similar scenario where you have similar case of data, you may not do multiple queries to the database, instead load it once and then filter the collection. Also interesting solution, cache remember for one hour, I think it's in seconds. Remember the result from the database, especially in a project like this, when data is really rarely changed because Laravel versions are released, well, minor version every week, but major version every six or now 12 months. Interesting solution is down below. If we scroll down, there is a class, actually a few classes in this project, which are kind of weird. I didn't really understand at first what they do. Laravel version from path. It's kind of like a model, but without eloquent. Let's take a look. Laravel version from path class which has only one method invoke, which is automatically fired on the new thing. Path is a parameter, so in our case, for example, 10, version 10 of Laravel, or version 9, or 5.8, or something like that. And then from the path, that class does the separation of segments, some checks, if that version is not found, then throws 404, otherwise takes the version from the database, and returns three things, version, path, and segments. So in various places, you need that Laravel version by subversion, by major version, by recommendation, whether it's LTS or not, or something like that. So an interesting solution to have a class which takes care of all of that, including doing first or fail. So generally in all the projects, you will have like Laravel version first or fail here, or find or fail here, and then pass that to the view. In this case, they split that into three variables, which they use in the view. Next, if we take a look at the blade files, they use app layout, which is component in resources, views, layouts, app blade. So it's a general template, which is extended in includes. And there are three include files. If we go to color key, there is a section with all the data for Laravel versions. Interesting solution is to have inline PHP. I'm not a big fan of inline PHP, but it works. And the logic here, as I understand it, so statuses of Laravel versions, if we take a look at the model, they are for the model, for the data. But those classes and those 
labels are for the view, for the blade, for visual representation. So where to put that? In the model? Maybe. But if they are related to presentation, why not put that into presentation layer in the blade? If we take a look at Laravel model of Laravel version, what does it have? Constants that we've seen before. Instead of fillable, they use guarded. It's a personal preference. Then cast some dates. And then there are a lot of eloquent related stuff like scopes, like attributes for get status. I guess it's for showing the data easily in the blade. So get major attribute. Actually, I like the name of this function, get major ish attribute. So it's major, but not exactly major. And then a few more attributes. And then there's something about notifications. We will get to that in a minute. And then there is to string. Why would you need to string on the model? While browsing the code, I couldn't find where it's actually used. Usually to string function in any class means that you would use that class as a string and then perform some string operations maybe. So maybe you can take a look at the code and you tell me in the comments if you find where is that actually being used. Next thing I wanted to show you is they also have routes API. So API to get the versions for your project if you want to use that. So routes API file has two similar to the routes web. So list of versions and then singular version. And if we launch that, for example, in Postman, we have something like this. So get slash API slash versions, and then you get the data for all the versions. And for example, if we try version slash nine, send, it should get the data for a single version. And it's powered by controller, Laravel versions controller, which is pretty similar to routes web, web controller, with the difference that it uses Laravel resource collections. So Laravel version resource is an API resource, which appeared in Laravel in 5.5 from what I remember. So there are a lot of transformations coming just inside of that API resource, including merge when. So if there's a specific version provided, and this is a method inside of that API resource class, so no one really is against extra method if they are needed in API resource class. So I think it's quite a good usage of API resource class that you can take Take a look and learn from. Then there is an interesting artisan command, console command called tweet important dates. It will check the versions needing notification. And this is exactly what comes from the model needs notification. Remember that method needs notification. It's in the model here down below. So needs notification in case of ending cycle of security fixes or bug fixes or any other condition. So if any version needs notification, then there will be tweet for that version. So tweet of Laravel version will stop receiving security fixes or bug fixes. And they use Zapier, HTTP post Zapier service to post that to Twitter. I actually Googled and found that Twitter account Laravel versions, but for now it's empty with only one testing text. So I guess it's more coming from them in the future. Another artisan command is called fetch Laravel versions. And it may be interesting to those of you who want to pull some data from the GitHub, from the GitHub API. So fetch versions from GitHub is a method that populates the query and then does the request with token of services GitHub to get information about the Laravel versions. I won't comment too much here. You just can look around. And if you do work with GitHub API, this is artisan command you can learn from. And finally, we can take a look at the tests. If we navigate to tests feature, there are feature tests, there are no unit tests, but I quite like this approach. We need to test the actual features, do they work? And in some cases, we need to add unit tests. I'm a big fan of this approach. So we take a look at API list versions test and test methods, the names speak for themselves. So it loads, it lists valid versions, it doesn't list future versions and a lot of those methods including testing that Laravel version from path that it returns the correct parsed data. So quite a lot of feature tests. And if we launch that in the terminal, PHP artisan test, it returns pass, 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 22 tests altogether. So again, something to learn from. So overall, Laravel versions repository is something to take a look at. Although the project is quite small, but there are a lot of things happening under the hood, as you just saw. And thank you to the Titan team and to Matt Stauffer personally to publish it and to make it available for free for all of us. And on this channel, I will keep doing daily videos. And if you want to support me with that, you can check out one of the three products that you can see on the screen, my courses, our quick admin panel generator for Laravel admin panels, or my live wire kit set of components. See you guys in other videos.